few more terms. This is like the fundamentals section of the class. A few more terms. So we just did intranet. I want to just note at this point that we are in the business school. And so when we do things like a change or an upgrade to a network, it's not just because. You guys learn uh, return on investment in finance? Is that in your finance class? So we're not going to upgrade our network equipment until we can do what? Show that there's a return, OK? So we need to show return. I'll just put ROI, because you guys know what that. Speaking of three that are acronyms, right? So we need to show a return on investment, or what else would you call it? A cost benefit, just whatever, OK? We're in the business school, and we need to be able to justify this stuff. And I tell you this, speaking of doing things the wrong way, is sometimes, it, and it used to be a lot easier when there weren't that many nerds around. So I used to be at the racetrack, and I could just be like, oh, I see this new toy. I want it. And then I would just go to the boss and be like, you know, we need this new Microsoft web server because it'll be really cool. I don't know. And then he would just buy it. And you know, I didn't really have a good justification for it. But they totally got them. So be good. And oh, here's some other stuff. So we talk about priorities. We can set priorities. So if we talk about network traffic, if I go over here, I can set priorities, for example, over this link. And some applications have more and higher priority, and so they work better. I can also just block things. We'll just put apps can be blocked. But we don't get to say, <laughs> we don't just get to decide, I want to block this, or I want to allow this. We need to make sure we make a business case for it. So we'll put here why, OK? I need to be able to show, you know, if I'm going to block a BitTorrent on my network, I'm not just going to block it because I can and I feel like I should. I'm going to think, you know, what is the impact on my network? What is the impact on my company? How much is it going to cost to buy whatever software I need to block it? Okay. There's also a cost benefit. And we'll put and legal. There's legal issues here too. There's other things we can do as networkers like monitor traffic. And that's a felony. So don't. It's a wiretap, folks. So don't do it. And then finally, we need to have what I already talked about, a tool in use. So we need to look at our tools as being something people are using. And the importance of them is that they're in use. So if you think about, and you've probably heard of a legacy system. Like a legacy system is a system that's kind of old and maybe we don't like it anymore. But if people are still using it and they're used to it, then we've got to consider that as, you know, why we should maybe keep it around. It's especially an issue in networking because we sometimes have to keep older networking stuff, older servers around, older protocols running, various stuff. So we'll just put legacy. So we go, and I'll just note here, there's this idea of infrastructure. And some people think of their network as just sort of the pipes that everything runs on. And that it just, I don't know, it needs to be the best it can be. I don't know what they think. But not infrastructure. We'll just put simply. We'll just put people might like. So people might like something they're using, and it's not up to us to just tear it out. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make here. So be nice. Now, we'll work on. We'll talk about some user stuff now. Seem kind of upside down, but that's OK. Let me turn this. Let me turn that around. Look at that. Try to do that with your computer. Or I guess you can, can't you? 
Alrighty, what do we got here? Quality of service. Okay, we're gonna shift gears a little bit. So we're moving out of, well, yeah. Now we're just gonna move into how we define or measure how well our network is working. Quality of service is, like everything else, going to be a three-letter acronym. We do Q, big Q, little o, big S. This is kind of a normal thing that you have the little o. There's like voice over IP ends up being a big, big V, a little o, and a big I, and a big P. Anyway, QOS, or quality of service. This is how well a particular connection, we'll just say performs. There's a set of criteria here of how well your network is functioning. Okay, For quality of service, you can have uh, what we would call a contract. Okay. So I can have a contract that says, when I go to Cox, I say, look, I want quality of service. And then Cox will guarantee any or all of the next things I'm going to say. Does anyone have a, so it, um, my connection at home really sucks. I have a three megabits per second connection at home. Okay, so this is what I pay for. They just raise my price, punks. So I started out and I had a 512, anyway, it was, I used to pay 15.99, 14.99 for my connection. Several years later, I'm paying $32.99 a month, okay? Now, there's little apps on the internet I can test my speed on. And so I run speed test speedtest.net. I don't remember who it is. You guys can test your own if you want. So if I run speed test, I might get, let's say, 2.9 megabits per second. Okay? Now Cox told me I was supposed to get 3 megabits per second, right? So if I call up Cox and I say, look, I'm signed up for a 3 megabits per second connection, but I just ran speed test and I got 2.9 megabits per second. I want a refund off of my price. What are they going to tell me? No. <laughs> They're going to say, you are stuck. Consumer, they have special wording in their advertisements, and it says, up to. You all know this. So you get up to. Businesses, for the most part, get exact. So we're talking about my little link here. So the racetrack had this link. It was a guaranteed speed. Okay, It was guaranteed. If you ever went below it, you could get money out of the carrier. Sign a contract for it. Okay, So quality of service generally is not guaranteed at all for consumers, sadly. I know I love that up to. OK, so the first one, we've already talked this one, transmission speed. This is bits per second, or BPS. I'll just put that right there. BPS, that's where I did three megabits per second, okay? Hopefully we're all used to these. So there's bits per second. There are kilobits per second. This is a thousand bits. I'm not gonna go over all of them. There's mega, which is a million bits and so on, okay? So we're all used to these. This is transmission speed, quality of service measure. So if I'm a business and I go to Cox and I say three megabit per second connection, Cox will guarantee that connection. Boom, okay? We will talk about this uh, when we get to the physical layer unit, which is gonna be in two weeks. The maximum speed here depends on mostly the capacity of the medium. Capacity of, so what kind of wire you're using? We'll put media. 
There is a distance issue that sometimes affects your transmission speed. And then there is a, we'll call it the speed of the devices. Okay. So for example, if I'm talking about my little switchy guy here, this switch will work at a hundred megabits per second. Okay. That's just how fast the switch goes, period. I couldn't connect any, and you can't make it faster. This is just not going to go faster. Okay? It might end up slower. If I plug something in that, you know, the wire is really awful, I may only get 10 megabits per second. That makes sense? So that's what I'm saying here. Capacity of the media, distance, and we'll talk more about that as we go, but anyway. And then how well the devices work. So that's number one quality of service measure. It's the one you hear the most about. Oh, and now we need to talk about why is it in bits. Okay. When you browse on the internet, sometimes you'll see your, as you're downloading something, it'll say so many, so many bytes downloaded at so many, so many bytes per second. Okay. That's because I don't know what those people are thinking. In networking, There is only bits, okay? We never do bytes. Okay. And in fact, how what is a byte by the way? Eight bits, but it's not. Okay? You guys ready for this? A byte is eight bits, but it's usually a character. Okay? This is a little spooky. This is computer stuff. In networking, we have an octet. Okay. So you guys know what a duet is. What's a duet? Two people, right? And then a quartet is, and guess what an octet is? It's eight. So the funny thing is, a byte is designed to represent like an A, B, C, D, okay? We don't. Our octet is literally a group of eight. It's just bits. And there just happens to be eight of them, and sometimes we group them together. So we'll put here, it's a group of eight. And we'll see, especially when we're doing addresses, that there might be a long, what? It's completely arbitrary, yeah. Okay. So we might have 32 bits of an address, and we just chop it up into eight, eight-bit pieces. So it can be some from the previous there's, there's no fields. Yeah, we don't. There's no fields or nothing. It's just groups of eight. Because in networking, it's only bits. If I go back way back to our signals, right? I don't have that in there. We talked about the electrical engineers. They're trying to get a bit from one place to another. We are bits. So it's only the bits. So again, you know, here we have, you know, if you're downloading a file, it's in 8-bit chunks, but the chunk itself means something. In networking, you know, there could be 3-bit chunks or 7-bit chunks, and there's all kinds of different ways, or the fields, I mean. So there's 3-bit fields, 7-bit fields, 32-bit fields, but we are literally just a group of 8, okay? So that's sort of a side note. And one other thing about transmission speeds. When you're in the LAN, you usually go with high speeds, okay? The equipment is cheap. Okay? Especially over short distances. Okay, so we'll note there. Because you typically in a LAN you're on fairly short distances, I mean this is somewhat short. So we're talking up to about a kilometer. Usually 500 meters is easily doable. The racetrack, the distance here to here was 500 meters. And when you're walking it, it's a long ways. It was a hike. 
There's free popcorn out here, by the way. So if you want to get some popcorn, you got to hike all the way across here. It's actually probably only about 400 meters. But it's totally doable to run a cable that runs at a pretty high speed for 500 meters. On the WAN side, oops, it ends up being expensive. The distances are longer. So we're talking usually kilometers, multiple kilometers here. That means there's more equipment involved and the cabling and equipment is a lot more. I'll put here. I'll put there. Cable and equipment. We'll just put a big dollar sign. Okay. And also there's a monopoly usually. Well, you're paying for. So there's a markup anyway, and you're just going to pay for it. So for the land side right now, oops, I'm supposed to t write it out in capitals. For a typical land, we're looking at 100 megabits per second as the baseline to 1,000 megabits per second. This is gigabit Ethernet. Okay, that's just normal stuff. On the WAN side, this is for a business, <clears throat> you might run as low as 64K bits per second. And usually you'll only go one megabit per second. This is guaranteed. But just like your home internet connection, a business might get a higher internet connection for the same reason you would. And you, sometimes those aren't guaranteed. But I know, for example, I think ODU has five one gigabit connections, and it's spread across several ISPs, and I believe those are all guaranteed. You'd have to ask around, though. But the reason why they go so low speeds is this is the guaranteed, like I, you know, this is 100% guaranteed, and it's going to work all the time. And the 64K bits per second, you know, you think like, wow, that's so low, I couldn't even check my email with that, right? By the way, you could check your email with that. You can't uh, get big images and stuff. But this is enough to handle like an ATM or just any other sort of credit card transactions. Because when you think about an actual transaction, you know, how much real data is there? And it's not much. You know, the credit card, it's going to be your credit card number, expiration date, you know, whatever codes are on it the amount you have, some security information. And, you know, you could have a whole store running on one of these connections. When I worked at Walmart, this was the connection size we had at our store, 64K. And it was enough for a whole store. I mean, we had, what, 14 checkout lines, layaway, whatever else. And it was plenty. So, fast on the LAN, slow on the WAN. What are we going to do here? Okay, so that's transmission speed. Next quality of service measure is called latency. Okay, this is again a quality of service measure. What this is, is the time it takes uh, we'll just say for the first, this is funny, for the first bit of a message to get to the destination. Okay? So what this means is if I'm here and I go to send a message, what I'm interested in is how fast does that first bit go? That's my latency. The reason why I said the first bit is because the speed of the second bit depends partially on the transmission speed, right? So I need to get, this is a, when it first, when the person first gets the sort of message I'm here, okay? This isn't, you know, how fast it takes to download the whole movie. It's just the first bit of the movie to get to its destination, okay? So that's how fast. So if this is like, you know, I don't know, one millisecond. That's great latency. 
100 milliseconds, it'd be not so good. We'll just put yuck. Okay. So that's how long it takes to get to your destination. Where are we at here? On the LAN, we're typically less than one millisecond. Okay. That's pretty typical, and they usually are down in tenths of a millisecond or less. Very, very fast on a LAN. On the WAN, it depends on the distance. Because at this point we're looking at, if we go a certain distance, you're looking at how far, how fast is the speed of light, okay? Well, radio waves are a little slower, by the way, but anyway. Even through fiber. You guys know all about this, right? Depends on the distance. And you're looking at, if you're going coast to coast, it's at least 45 milliseconds to go that far, coast, okay? So the WAN is mostly the distance. Usually a LAN is a tight range. I mean, we're looking, you know, a kilometer or less. That's very fast to get light flashes where you want to go. But if you're going thousands of miles, it's going to be a long distance. I was just watching a thing or saw a thing about latency. And there's a company that... They do stock trading. So if you talk about, there's Chicago. There's like a trading, what is the Chicago Board of Trade or something? You all have taken finance, right? So they trade like commodity. Anyway, they trade stuff in Chicago. And then in New York, they also trade stuff. Okay. Right now, they have some fiber optic cables that go, they kind of go up, they go like around, up by Albany. You guys know where Albany is, right? Anyway, they come up Albany because there's a big old mountain range there, and then it goes down to New York, okay? And what they do is they trade If the price in Chicago is ever lower than New York, they buy in Chicago. So they issue an order to buy in Chicago. And then they sell in New York. Does that make sense? And then they make money because it was cheaper. They bought it for cheaper than they sold it for. And if the reverse is true, it's the same. Okay. Latency is a huge deal on this trade because the fast the speed at which they can get this the message of what the price is to New York, the faster they can act on it. So somebody was like, okay, we're going to cut down and we're going to start at Buffalo. And they cut off and they put in their own fiber optic cables. This is insane. They put in their own fiber optic cables and they cut off like five milliseconds because it didn't have to go all the way to Albany and down. So five milliseconds and whoever this was is starting to mint money because now they have the earliest notice that the Chicago price is lower and everybody else is basically out of business because these guys are doing it all. So someone gets wind of that and they're like, no, this is crazy. What we're going to do to beat everybody is we're going to use microwave transmission and we're going to put up these microwave towers that's going to transmit in a more straight line and it <laughs> that they're going to they're doing it cuz it's going to make so much money transmission yeah. towers because yeah. microwave transmission does go at the speed of light in a fiber optic cable it's actually a little bit slower cuz the glass doesn't allow the light as fast <laughs> So here is latency. So it isn't just while you're playing your game that you can kill your friends easier. You can actually make money with latency. So latency, this is fun stuff. OK, so that's another quality of service measure. And again, whoever leased this line, by the way, so this is a phone company line, right? They guarantee the latency. They add up the distances and how fast their equipment is along the way 
and the company that does this link will guarantee it. And they have to, because if these people are doing trading based on these links and how fast they get the stuff, if it ever goes below a certain latency, then they're going to start losing money. So that's fun. Fun times, come on. All right, availability. So this is another quality of service measure. This one's nice and simple. This is the percent of time that the network or the link, we better put network link, is available. Again, this is pretty much just WAN links. How much of the time is your network going? The phone company likes to do what they call five nines of availability. You guys ever heard of Six Sigma? It seems like Six Sigma is six nines, but I don't know. I'm not into Six Sigma. I'm not a manufacturing person. Anyway, this is the telephone company. I'll just put telco. Five nines of availability means a link will be up or down for only seconds in a year. I recognize that voice. <laughs> I need to get my boom and voice going. All right. So five nines of availability is really just seconds in a year. And by the way, speaking of the seconds in a year, I was talking to someone that works at Cox, and they have to average their monthly seconds. I think it's over two or three months. Because even the tiniest outage in one month would trigger the availability quality of service. And then they'd lose money. Well, they would, I think, I would hope they would just stop trading, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they'd have to, they'd have to pay some serious money, yeah. So these guys, as lines, you know, goes down, they're going to, see, people are losing a lot of money doing that. Anyway, so five nines of availability, and this is what most of us shoot for, and, yeah. So that's fun. So that's availability. These get a little easier. Error rate. This one is the percentage of messages that don't have any errors. We'll just put damaged or lost. Okay. You will get guarantees on this, but it's usually, it used to be a bigger deal than it is now. I'll just put here most links have very low error rates, okay? It used to be a big deal of, went back, especially when they were doing um, analog transmissions, they would get a lot of error rates, but nowadays you just don't get the error rates like you used to. What do we got here? Oh, some methods, I'll just put protocols. So some ways of transmitting can correct errors. And in fact, when I first had this class, it was a lot nerdier, and we had to actually do things like calculate. There were these little binary numbers you could put at the end of your message that if there happened to be an error in your message, it would fix it. It was really kind of cool, but I don't remember how to do it, so it's not that important anyway. And I'll just note here, substantial. If there's a lot of error rates, so substantial error rates is basically going to mean more retransmission, which is yuck too. Because then we're going to clog up our line with stuff that's not, you know, we're just sending the same message over and over again trying to get it out. So retransmission is a disaster. It's oh, perfect. All right. Oh, am I leaving these up long enough? I'm sorry. You guys got to holler if you haven't written them down. Part of the problem with the PowerPoint is the whole slide would be up, and I could just read the whole thing, and then you just move on to the next slide. But I need to have you think about it. Are we good? All right, for users, they experience the quality of service indirectly. 
So even though you might think like, okay, you know, at Cox or whatever, my home network connection, I'm going to up the speed and that's going to solve all of my problems. But it doesn't. There's a lot, the sort of interactions here. So a user has the sense of what they call throughput. Throughput is a little bit like transmission speed. Okay. But it might be, usually it's lower. So it's going to be lower than the transmission speed if there's congestion. This is the big one. If there's ever congestion on a shared link. So we talked about the multiplexing. So remember, I have my access line. If two of us are transmitting at one time, and there's a switch, and here's our shared link, if there's too much speed going on here, it's going to back us both off. We'll just put congestion equals slow. Okay, This is like the freeway, right? The freeway, it says 70 miles per hour, doesn't it? All the way to Richmond. But man, once you get above, is it Newport News? You know, Newport News, it's always just locked up solid, right? You're never going to go 70 up there. All the way to Richmond, you might. You might get up to 65, 60. But if the, you know, if it's 2 a.m. and the road's empty, then yeah, I'm going 70. So congestion is going to slow you down. So again, a user experiences throughput and the transmission speed. So I might get the transmission speed. I don't know, this might be 100 megabits per second megabits per second. And it might be working at 100 megabits per second, but since multiple people are trying to use that, they're not each getting it. This happens at my house a lot. My kid just got into watching YouTube videos, and he's watching one where people are um, they're reenacting classic film scenes. His big one right now he likes to see is there's this one that does the lightning strike of Back to the Future. Come on, that was an awesome scene, and the car like goes psh and anyway, so he watches it over and over again. And usually it's not a problem. Like, it'll slow down web browsing. But if I'm ever watching Hulu and he's doing that, Hulu will just kind of freeze up, which is a drag because I put the kids to bed and I want to be able to watch some Hulu. And then all of a sudden it'll freeze up. And that means somebody's not in bed or somebody's not asleep. You find basically. Yeah, it's basically bottlenecking, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad, yeah. I got a pretty sucky connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got basically, you can watch Hulu and nothing else. <laughs> like literally nothing else. Like you can't even really web browse while the Hulu is going. YouTube, you can usually do something else. And that's usually a little burstier so you can get through it. All right, a couple more. So response time. So response time is how long a user is going to, you know, type in their request, how long does it take to get the response back? And this is a big deal. If you think about Google, they just started making it so when you type in the search bar, it rapidly anticipates what you're searching for and actually updates the search results while you're typing. That's because they want the response time to be really high. The response time isn't just latency. It's going to be lower than latency. So the amount of time it takes Google to get a response back to me isn't just my latency. Isn't it just it isn't just how fast I can get the message there and back. It has to do with the load on the servers or whatever I'm trying to connect to. We'll just put servers. What have I got here? Server. You have to load on servers, and I need to put, I'll just note here, maybe congestion too. You'll notice here, if I've got congestion, it's the same way as reducing my transmission speed. It's going to kill my response time too. If I have to wait to get my packet into the shared link, then it's killing my latency also, or my response time. And then finally, downtime. 
Uh, we did, what did we do? We call that availability. Downtime will be lower than availability because this isn't just about <clears throat> just the one link that we leased from Cox. This is about every step along the way. So we'll put here devices along the way. And it's funny, for the most part, it's not as bad now because I'm a little more careful. Most downtime that people have at their desktop where you'd have one person's link go out is usually because they have somehow screwed up with their access line. So the little plug coming out the back of their computer, they've either pulled it out. I used to be in an office where we ran the plug across the floor. And just about every six months, just the combination of people walking on it and your chair running over it, it would just break. And so your network connection would go out. And it was long enough, like six months is just long enough that you're like, what happened? What happened to my link? And then you'd be looking around a little bit, and then it'd be like, oh, that's right. This is out again. So that's downtime. All right, now you can go back to my face because we are done with the lecture for today. All right, so that is it for our first lecture. Whew. <laughs> now the days have gone. I know I'll get here. I've got to get used to talking for two and a half hours again. <clears throat> and so I will see you all on Tuesday. I have posted a hands-on. There's a hands-on assignment. I think I made it due next week. Yes. That's next week, right? What I want you to do for that, you're just going to design a network. So I got my little thingy here. And I want you to just think about it in terms of how can I plug two switches together or three switches together and connect all a bunch of clients to it, OK? So just make a little diagram. Basically like the ones I wrote, just barely. You know, just draw this right switch and then have little lines coming out of it. It can be really simple. A lot of networking is just that simple. Just a little sketch on a napkin. So that's next week. It shouldn't be too hard. Send me an email if you have problems. You guys out in TV land too. So I'll see you next week or I guess you'll see me.